Come here. There's big dogs. Ow. There's small dogs. Greedy dogs. No. Stop it. And speedy dogs. Dumbo! Dumbo, come here! Dogs you can't touch. Norman puts a stop to everything. And dogs that love too much. We can't do this every morning, can we? But no matter what the size or the problem... I know that I've done this to him. Graham Hall can fix them all. Ah, no. <laughs> I'll take on any dog. Any size. No. <laughs> any problem. Master dog trainer Graham Hall has helped thousands of desperate dog owners turn their problem pooches into perfect pets with his regular podcasts and no-nonsense techniques. Come on. This week, Maddie and... A disastrous duo turning country life into a living nightmare. I dislocated my shoulder the other day. Bisley, come on, stop it. The fact he pulled my arm out of my socket. Mm. It's not a win. Kobe, an Aggie Alsatian. It's not normal to have a dog that does this. Threatening to scare off their loved ones for good. We're definitely not going to get our family life back unless Kobe's behaviour changes. And barking mad Casper could leave his owner with an impossible choice. I'm either going to lose my home or I'll be forced to rehome the dog. Graham's first appointment in Warwickshire is the epitome of double trouble. Bisley! Bisley! Maddie is a two-year-old Doberman and Bisley a five-year-old boxer. Bisley is a likeable lump and Maddie is a highly strung... Princess? Diva. And together they can turn even the smallest outing into a day from hell. They are both... Really amazing dogs in the house, but the second we take them outside, their recall disappears, their respect disappears, everything that we love about them pretty much disappears. Pub owner Sam and children's charity director Laura got their dogs to complete their picture of a perfect country life. Oh, Madison, heel! But every walk is a real drag. Jeez. Oh, for me, walking them on the lead is absolutely horrific. I hate it. In fact, I, it makes me angry and I feel like I'm always on high alert. Sit, Madison, sit down. Oh my God. Things have got so bad, it's taking its toll on the oh. couple's relationship. There's a really nice thing about walking together at the weekend and we can't do it because actually we just end up fighting. Bisley, Bisley, Bisley. But it's off lead that Bisley. things are at their very worst. Madison. Our absolutely overriding problem is it's recall. recall. Bisley has an overwhelming desire to make friends. Bisley! 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 Bisley, come here now! When you've got a 50 kilo boxer running at you, the amount of awkward run-ins we've had with people, I mean, there's just too many to count. Maddie, on the other hand, has a compulsion for country smells, which could put her in grave danger. We're just absolutely terrified that that's going to lead to her demise, ultimately. Yeah, getting run over or being taken out by a farmer. It's not even a possibility. It'll happen yeah. if we can't do something about it. Well, hopefully, there's a man who can. Dobermans are famously strong-willed, you know? They get uh, an idea in their head and kind of off they go. They don't like listening. Bisley's a boxer, and boxers just love fun. So if there's fun to be had the other side of the park, that's where they'll be running to. Hello, hey. hi, Laura, hello. Hey, sorry. Bisley, come here. Bisley, eh? Hello. This is Bisley, yes. Good Lord, he's a big lad, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, this must be Maddie then. Hello, Maddie. <laughs> hello. You're lovely. So tell me about your dogs. Why did you get them? We got Bisley first. He's just got so much personality. Everybody loves him. 
and a lot of people said, well, he, he must be lonely, so why don't you get him a playmate? So what's the reality? The reality is we can't want them together. Uh, it's just too stressful and leads to arguments and actually injury on occasion. Right, well, we could talk about it all day long, but we, we've got to get out and do it, haven't we? So, um, <sighs> shall we uh, get togged up for the road and go? Yeah. Oh. Sleep. Calm down. Hey. Oh. Oh. Two dogs taking two people for a walk, isn't it? Bisley, why are you being so bad on the lead? Maddie's just screaming and oh, let me go. Having hey. exhausted every other option, they've reluctantly resorted to a choke chain for Maddie. I don't like them. Well, the chain's not working, is it? I think we need to find a better and kinder way of doing it. So, what's it like for you, Laura? Awful. I can't yeah. walk them together. Right. Ever. I mean, I'm more than happy to show you. Come on, let's see what it looks like. Bisley! Heel! It's like Ben Hur, but without the chariot. Whoa! <laughs> But Graham hasn't seen the worst of Maddie and Bisley's behaviour. For that, they've headed to the safety of an enclosed field. Do you want to show me what they're like off lead? Sure. Stay, Bisley. Stay. No, Bisley! Bisley! Bis! Bisley! Bis! Bisley! Maddie! Bisley! Sorry. Maddie, quiet. Oh, Maddie, okay. come here. Come here. Come on. Wait. Maddie, come on. As soon as they're off leave, Bisley and Maddie just belt off because, well, frankly, what's over there is more fun than mum and dad. And I think they've tried lots of different things, but the bottom line is there's no consequence for not coming back. Maddie, come on. Sam and Laura moved to the countryside to follow their dream of an idyllic life, but the reality has turned into a nightmare. Now they live in constant fear that their dogs could be shot. If she goes and gets into a field with livestock in it, then the farmer's well within his rights to shoot her. There's no part of it that's fun. It's a perpetual circle of horror. Yeah. There's some real danger here. They're either going to get shot by a farmer going after some sheep, they're going to get knocked down on a rug, or they're going to go and upset the wrong kind of person and get reported under the Dangerous Dogs Act. And if that happens, one or both of these dogs could be taken off them forever. Coming up, Graham takes on a German Shepherd whose aggressive door policy is driving friends and family away. He's just disastrous. He needs taming. He's called to a family facing eviction because of their dog's asbo behaviour. I'm either going to lose my home or I'll be forced to rehome the dog. Bisley, heal. And how will Graham undo Maddie and Bisley's bad habits? You've trained them to pull on command. I, I don't believe this is it. <laughs> Master dog trainer Graham Hall is in rural Warwickshire. Bisley! Where a couple's countryside idyll is being ruined by their delinquent doggy duo. No, Bisley! Maddie Bisley. and Bisley. Alone. Now it's time for some home truths. Good. Well, let me tell you where you're going wrong, I think. <laughs> um, kind of everywhere, really? <laughs> I'm honest. Well, um, one thing I saw straight away was you keep shouting heel a lot. That's, that's you, Laura, particularly, mm. right? It's when you're saying heel is the problem. Every time the dogs are pulling, you shout heel when I'm pulling. Yeah. Heel, pulling, heel, pulling. What does heel mean? Yeah. Pull. So, in fact, you have trained them to walk on the lead, you've trained them to pull <laughs> on command. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I feel like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'm seeing is that she gets herself quite excited, and I think in your efforts to just get her to respond in some way, you've ended up with a choke chain, which I don't like, I'll be honest. Um, I'm guessing you probably don't either. Not no, at all. No, we don't. No. I think we, we need to try something else. I've decided to do lead walking first because, well, to put it simply, if you haven't got control of your dogs when they're right here, what chance have you got when they're over there somewhere? Graham's seen how Laura's excited commands to stop the pulling have been interpreted by the dogs as encouragement. But he thinks curing this 
will be a walk in the park. All they need is a new collar, a slack lead and a calm demeanour. So the reason we've got the collar on nice and high is it's as far as it can be from a chest, because a chest where all the power is. Now with a standard collar, he wants to demonstrate how a tiny signal can make a massive difference. So if she moves away from me, I'm just going to do a quick, quick flick on the uh, uh, quick flick on the collar and release. Previously, you were holding on for dear life, really. The more you held, the more she pulled against you. So we've got this tug of war going on. Time for Graham to put his money where his mouth is. Got him. Good girl, that's better so far. So, uh, oh, good girl. Oh, she's got it. Now we're working as a team. Yeah. Good girl. There we go. There. Wait. Now you're just showing off. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> yes. I quite like showing off when it's going well. <laughs> She's turned into a bit of a star pupil. That was mm. better than I thought. She just got Oh, yeah, it. I can't yeah. believe that. So let's see what he's like. Yeah. Maddie may have come to heel without a fight, but how will Graham fare with a hefty seven stoner? Oh, good boy. Come here. Come on. Oh, blimey, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> to everyone's astonishment, Bisley is proving to be an even brighter student. Good Lord. This teacher's pet is taking things one step further. <laughs> it's the sitting down, what's that about? I can't believe it. This is really good, come on. I'm, I'm literally gobsmacked. <laughs> It's been a remarkable transformation, but it's when these two get together that they bring out the worst in each other. Right, you two. So the real test will be walking them side by side. Good boy, that's better. Hey, come on then. Come on, you. Graham's proven with clear signals the pair will do as they're told. I've never seen them walk like that in my whole entire life. Good. Right, over to you. OK. But the training will only work if the owners can do it themselves. Right, Sam, when you're ready. Come on. Come on. Lovely. Yeah. That's nice. Come on. Keep going. That's Come it. On. Good girl. Good. Good girl. <laughs> Great. Well done. What are you thinking? I'm, I'm a little bit bitter, if I'm honest. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> what is that? It, it, I, I don't believe this is it. No. Great. Yeah. But no. But believe it, because we've changed the colour. You're walking nice and calmly. So it's not a fluke, I'm sure of it. There's only one place to go from here, isn't there? Yeah. Walk two dogs. Do you want to do it? No. no. You. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Take your time, get your leads right. Yeah, I'm nervous now. <laughs> It's a lot of pressure. Right. <laughs> I thought so, because I can see it. Yeah. And if I can see it, the dogs will see it. Well, I'm confident. I am confident. <laughs> right, you. Are you ready? Let's go. Good girl. Come on. Ah. Come on. Ah. So, Laurie, your tone of voice, when you're telling him, needs to just come down a note or two. It's been a bit sort of like, ha! Ah! And it needs to be a bit more, ah. OK. Sounds subtle, but it's the difference between sort of screaming and I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh. That's it. <laughs> and she also needs to praise them. Good boy, Busy. Good girl, Mads. This is well great. done. Just by sending the right signals, Laura has achieved what she thought was impossible. Both dogs walking happily by her side. So, what are you thinking? Better than I could have ever Good imagined, girl. so... Thank but this you. was a great start, and it's changed their view of you. So yeah. I'm hoping that'll rub off when we start to do recall. Definitely, me too. <laughs> Graham may have got Maddie and Bisley walking well on the lead, but their shocking recall is a much bigger problem. Bisley! One that could cost them their lives. Bisley, come here now! But before he can even attempt to rein in these runaways, He's been called out to another case 100 miles away in North London. To meet Kobe, 
an 11-month-old white German shepherd. Oh, you clever boy. Who's the apple of his owner's eye. Maybe I'm biased, he's very intelligent. He is a very intelligent. I'm glad he's got that from me. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Entrepreneurs Mark and Dawn took early retirement so they could spend more time with their grandkids. There we go. Very and nice. after waiting years, very they finally nice. decided to get their dream dog. He's just great to have around. I cannot imagine life without him. He's been amazing. But recently, that dream's become a nightmare as Kobe has taken on the role of doorman, deciding who can come in. So I am so sorry. I think I'll make a move because he's a little bit you don't like aggressive him? for me. People feel very intimidated when they walk in the door. The fear on people's faces, it's horrible. Sorry, <laughs> I'm really sorry. Kobe's aggressive door policy has been driving friends and family from their home. Hi, Brandon. It's enough. I'm so sorry. Dawn, I'm this sorry. Isn't normal. I'm sorry. Just don't smart. <laughs> Kobe. She's gone and got this dog, and he's just an absolute feral animal. He needs taming. But worst of all, Dawn and Mark are missing out on precious time with their young grandkids. One day, we'll let you through the front door, I promise you. <laughs> Elsa's getting upset, um, so it's just not worth it. You see Grandpa another time. Seeing my granddaughter like I had to do today through a glass door is very upsetting, very upsetting. <laughs> We've had a fabulous nursery put in upstairs and they're frightened to bring them. Kobe was a pup in lockdown and was used to only having mum and dad around. When these strange things called visitors turned up, he was terrified, and that's when the aggression began. We're definitely not going to get our family life back unless Kobe's behaviour changes. I think my biggest fear is if Kobe took it that step further and, and did bite them. I'd be horrified. We have to solve it because we, we love him to pieces and we love our grandchildren and children to pieces. Some German Shepherds can be a bit on edge, they're a bit hyper, uh, and they've got a very strong bite, and they can be quite guarding. <laughs> you put those three things together and you've got really a recipe for trouble, haven't you? Hello, Dawn, hello. hello. Oh, you're not very good, are you? He must scare the life out of people. <laughs> Dawn's tone of voice is all over the joint. Um, she's not really telling him off. Now, I don't want her to shout, but she just sounds like, come on, Kobe, no, no, no. Uh, there's nothing about that that's telling him what he's doing is wrong. On the contrary, it actually sounds delightful. You bring people in. Yeah. You're sitting down on one of these lovely seats. Yeah, and I tell them... Don't move. Do not move. And if they need to go to the toilet, it's a problem. Yeah, you have to come in with an empty bladder. Yeah. <laughs> So you sit here and you do So if I move now, what happens? Huh? It's not very nice, back. All right, let's... I'll tell you what, let's put him away so we can all concentrate and we'll have a nice chat. OK, great. Come on. You know, what impact has this had on you? It's very sad because we can't see the grandchildren as much as we want to as well, so... It really has a big impact. We have the same issue with friends. Very few of our friends are willing to come and face that when they walk in the door. He's going down the wrong path and he's, he's learning to nip at people and bark and, and scare people. But if he bites them, even if he didn't really mean to hurt them, he could be put down. I don't know if you've noticed, but every time you hold him back, he gets worse. Whatever we do, we, we must avoid that holding on to him. The other thing that you're doing is you're talking to him too much. Mm. There's two things about the way you're communicating with him, Don. One is there's too many words. Mm. I'm aware of that as well. And the I'm other one is it. the tone. So I think we need a system. You know, my intention is that you should be able to get a friend over for a drink. That would be incredible. Be great. With no barking? Well, depends how good your friend is. Do they bark a lot? 
<laughs> Coming up, Graham's training is put to the test when Kobe faces his arch nemesis, Brandon. It is horrible. I know, I'm sorry. It's not nice coming here. I know. Can Graham teach Casper to stay calm before his family life is pulled apart? If I had to drive somewhere and hand him over, it'd be like giving up a child. And will Maddie and Bisley ever be safe off lead? I'm fairly convinced we are going to fail at this together. <laughs> Master dog trainer Graham Hall's in London, helping Dawn and Mark get to grips with their highly aggressive German Shepherd. The first problem they've got is they just can't get anybody into the house through the hallway. So I'm going to show them a technique that gets Kobe into the living room at the side so that they can get, bring somebody in and then they can introduce them on their terms. So the point is here that if we can get a guest into the house, and then introduce Kobe to them, he's going to be a bit calmer. To help break Kobe's guarding habit, first, Graham is going to sweeten the deal with ham. What I'm doing is the simplest bit of training in the world, in a sense. If I get a treat and he's interested in it, and I throw it in the room, he's going to follow, isn't he? In. So as he's travelling in, he's hearing the soundtrack in, so he's beginning to associate that. Hang on a minute, if I hear that word... But I'm actually creating a hand signal here that means go into the room, OK? Now, eventually, we can take the treats out of this or we can just use a treat now and again just to create this kind of you-never-know-jackpot effect. Hey, what's this? In. Off you go. Clever boy. OK. So far, so good. Well, let's swap places. You have a go. OK. Dawn's been using the wrong tone of voice with Kobe. Now she needs to stick to a one-word command and avoid anything too high-pitched. In. Well, it worked. Good boy. Easy, right? Very easy. At this stage, easy. Who would have thought? Yeah. No. Brilliant. So you've taken control now. Yeah, I like that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and then try the next one without. In. Brilliant. Now throw him one. That's it. With Dawn delivering on tone and technique, it's time for Mark to take the reins. Kobe, in. That's it. And throw it a bit further, Mark, when you do. Kobe, in. This training relies heavily on repetition. Good boy. It can take hours or even weeks for a dog to learn a new command. In. Good boy. So far, so good, but the next step could be a major trigger. What we now need to do is start ringing the doorbell and then see what happens, cos we need to get him to go into the door, even though somebody just rang the doorbell. That's not quite so easy. Brandon, a long-term family friend, has offered to help. Oh. oh, what's that? Now, that's interesting. <laughs> ah! In. Wait. No. No. That's no. It. Come on, in. in. Kobe is point blank refusing to go into the room, but Graham steps in and offers him a treat. Watch, in. You're Easy. a miracle Let's worker. Go. <laughs> Let's go to the door then. Right. With Kobe safely stowed away, now Graham can bring in Brandon. Right. Hello, it's Brandon, isn't it? Hello. Come on through, mate. Brandon, grab a seat. Oh, hello. hello. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? Nice to see I'm good. You. Oi, he's barking already. Because he can see through the... Yeah. No. Tone of voice, body language. Yeah? Oh, yeah. No. So the message here is, he's my friend, don't you dare. He really doesn't like me. He doesn't, does he? No. <laughs> We've picked the right person then, that's <laughs> ideal. <laughs> The final step is introducing Kobe to Brandon. Right, let's unleash the erstwhile beast. If Kobe kicks off, Graham wants Dawn to bring him under control with a firm no command. All right, come on, you. Let's see what he does. Come on, the Brandon over there, look. Let him through, let him have a sniff, that's Hello, fine. Hello, Kobe. Can I give him a little stroke? Well, you can if he comes in here. Good Hello, boy, Kobe. that's it, don't worry. 
Good boy. Oh my god. Kobe. Normally you hate me. Great. Oh my god, we're friends. Good boy. You resisted the temptation to overreact because you didn't overreact. He didn't overreact. What's he just done? He's lying down. Amazing. This is unbelievable. Has I've it, never, <laughs> ever seen him like this. Fantastic. It's like a different dog. Good boy, Kobe. Well, I fully expected he was going to rip your throat out, but he didn't. That's well, he good. did last time. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just amazed. I'm absolutely amazed because this never happened. There's work to do because this is introducing one person, but Kobe needs to meet lots and lots of other people. Yay! He just needed somebody to look up to. He needed a bit of leadership, and he's seeing that now. Oh, I'm just delighted for Jordan and Mark. I mean, I know that this has been bothering them. So, yeah, I'm really happy for them. It's going to make such a difference to our lives. It's just going to be like old times, which is what we wanted. But big problems don't always come in big packages. 20 miles up the road, another family needs Graham's help with their three-year-old Shih Tzu cross, Casper, a little dog with a big bark. Casper! Casper, stop! School teacher Sophie decided to get Casper three years ago. Stop, down! To help her daughter Lola cope with her parents' divorce. Good boy. We got him when she was going to see her dad less and it was something she'd wanted for a long time. There we go, good boy. It had an amazing impact on her, and she Stop. went from being quite weepy when she got back from seeing him to just so excited and happy to see the dog. Come on, come on. He's my best friend, and as I don't have any people in the house except me and Mum. At four months old, Casper's excessive barking began. Three years later, it's put the whole family's future in jeopardy. The barking has become a massive problem and has resulted in neighbours complaining, the council claiming noise nuisance. <coughs> There's no one there, Casper. <coughs> if someone gets a delivery three doors down, he'll bark. He barks all the time at anything. <coughs> a group of teenagers going down the street, <coughs> birds, cats. I'm either going to lose my home or I'll be forced to rehome the dog. Lola has said constantly, we are not rehoming him. But I can't assure her that she'll always have her dog. Sorry. <laughs> I see pictures of Casper. He's, um, he's, he's a cute little dog. I just wonder whether he might be a little bit spoiled, because, you know, spoiled dogs are a bit like spoiled children. They're the ones that are the loudest. Hi. This is Casper, then. Yes. <laughs> well, he's quite cute when he's quiet, isn't he? He is so cute, so adorable, but he can change within a split second. Right. OK. So tell me about that. So he will bark at any stimulus, like could be children just walking past chatting. Yeah. If I just say hello to someone, he'll bark because he thinks that means somebody's here. So tell me why you got Casper, then. Lola had wanted a dog for years, and then the, the real deciding factor was when her dad was moving further away and her contact with him was going to become just two days a month. I, I knew that it was going to be really tough for her, mm. so I've, that was really what made me think a dog would be a really a great addition to yeah. the family. So it worked, for the sound of it. <laughs> it sounds like he was great company, but it's kind of gone wrong, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Well, better fix you then, eh? Right, shall we see the problem? Yeah, let's. Okay. <coughs> so he's barking at the bin lorry, then, eh? 
Casper's quick to bark at any passerby, but as soon as Sophie's phone rings, he's even worse. Hello? Sorry, sorry, sorry the dog's barking. Hello? Casper, stop, stop, no one's here. Shh, stop, no one's here. When I first came to the door, Casper was barking his head off, but this isn't just a dog barking at a door kind of problem. No, he's barking at anything whatsoever that takes the attention away from him. In a nutshell, he's just craving attention, and when he thinks he's not going to get it, he shouts at you, and often he gets rewarded, in effect, by getting the attention. So we're going to turn it on its head. If he's being naughty, we're going to take all the attention away, but the big deal is, if he calms down, even for a couple of seconds, we'll let him back in. And he's going to learn that, actually, the only way he gets attention is by being quiet. With this kind of training, when you're ignoring something, there's a good chance that it gets worse before it gets better. So, what we're going to do is... I'm going to get you to do your normal stuff, phone calls and all the rest of it. If he behaves badly, then it's a case of, right, pick the lead up, take him outside, take him to the kitchen, and once he calms down again, he gets to come back in. It really, in essence, is dead simple. Right, let's get started then. I'll grab a seat. Do you want to go to your okay. desk and we'll uh, let the games begin? Right, so I'm ready when you are. No. That's it. As soon as Casper calms down, he's allowed back in the room. Oh, you can go and bring him back in. That was quick. Good boy. Good boy. Hello. Good boy. Now, you see that shake-off? That's quite significant. Shake-offs happen when dogs kind of calm down a bit. It's like a human going, phew. A shake-off usually means kind of like, right, back to normal then. That's quite encouraging. So, right, ready when you are, I think. Let's give it another go. No. That's it. <laughs> right, come back in. Give it a second. I reckon that's good enough. Bring him back. Good boy. The whole right. process is repeated dozens of times. In here. Here we go. <laughs> He's definitely barking less. Let's do it again. <laughs> we just need to keep doing it, doing it, I think. Until eventually... Hello? <laughs> no. Hang on. Good boy. Ooh. There's a breakthrough. Good boy. That's OK. You said no. He stopped. Therefore, we don't have to take him out. Casper's not been completely cured, but now he'll stop barking with a command. It's getting a tiny bit better every single time. Hello? There you go. If you carry on talking now, as though you're having a conversation with somebody. Hi, how are you doing? Yeah? Are you going to come over later, about 7.30? I can promise the dog will be sensible. <laughs> OK. All right, see you later. Bye. Very good. Well, two things seem to be true. One is that he's not barking anymore when you answer the phone, and two is you're uncannily good at having imaginary conversations with people. <laughs> <laughs> Time to show daughter Lola the progress. Grab a seat. Well, we've been busy. Casper's been learning to be a better boy. When's the last time you've seen your mum answer the phone in, in, in a peaceful way? When Casper wasn't here. <laughs> when Casper wasn't yeah. here, yeah. Yeah, right. Here we go. There we go. Phone's ringing, no reaction. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. How about that? Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. There you go. How about that? Very good. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's good, then. Phew. 
So we've only scratched the surface really so I think we've got a great result. I mean, you've seen a difference in your dog, haven't you? Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot more work to do because you've identified lots of triggers. So he, he reacts to the doorbell. Sometimes he reacts to people walking down the street. So the principle that we're using here, you can apply to all of those things. This morning, you were quite emotional once or twice at the thought of what could have happened if we couldn't fix this. What are you thinking now? I feel that I might be able to go about my day and not be so stressed, not mm. worry that Lola's going to lose her dog, not worry that I might lose my flat. Mm. So I feel really optimistic. We've come a long way in one day. Casper's learned to be quiet. Now, that's going to make a massive difference. It means this family can stay here, and it means Casper can stay with them. Casper become a different Casper. <laughs> <laughs> we'll both be very happy, won't we? And yeah. you'll be happy if we don't have to ever consider rehoming him again. It's late. Still to come, it's late. can Graham rein in Maddie and Bisley's unruly behaviour? Madison! Madison! And persuade Laura and Sam that a peaceful country life is possible. This will be a one-off, this will be a first, yeah. if I'm able to bring him back. Master dog trainer Graham Hall's heading back to Warwickshire for his final challenge of the week, a canine double act that's turning a dream country life into a nightmare for owners Sam and Laura. So last time uh, we did really well with the lead walking, which was great, but today I've got to finish the job. I've got to do um, recall, getting the dogs to come back to them on command. And that, that's not easy. Graham's under no illusion, correcting Maddie and Bisley's abysmal recall is going to be an uphill battle. But it must be fixed, or their errant ways could see them at the wrong end of a farmer's shotgun. So, have you got on with the lead walking? We yeah. have moments of amazingness, and then we have moments of testing. Rome wasn't built in a day, I think that's normal. Yeah. So, good start. Graham's goal today is to get both dogs to recall from their greatest distraction. Good boy. Other animals. And more than anything else I can think of in dog training, recall is about repetition. Hundreds and thousands of repeats. The key to establishing good recall is making coming back more rewarding than running off. But it's something that needs to be taught one pooch at a time. Maddie's up first. So she's really interested in the smell in this field. So is she going to come back? Maddie, here. No. <laughs> well, she came back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs do that. Let's try this. She's with you now. Maddie, here. Maddie, here. Maddie, here. Good, yeah. No, here. Yes! What's this? Maddie's return earns her a delicious treat and an extra helping of praise. Maddie, here. Ah, clever girl, what's this? She'll discover that right now, the only thing that's going to get you the treat is if you come back when I call you. Yeah. Maddie's got to get used to responding to a command. Good girl! There you go. If she misses her cue, a short tug of the long lead sends a clear signal that she must return. Do you want to have a crack at it, Laura? Love to. Maddie here! Maddie! Maddie here! Maddie! Good girl! Right. It's working, but Laura needs to be much quicker on the lead. All right, let's try again then. So, when you're ready... OK. Maddie here! Perfect. Good girl! Now, that's the kind of instant response that yeah. we haven't seen before. So far, Maddie has delivered. Now it's time for Sam to take on Bisley's shocking recall. Bisley, here. Bisley, Flake. here. Flake. Bisley, here. Flake. Biz, here. Here. But this boxer is putting up a fight. Here. Here. Good, Good boy. boy. Don't sound frustrated. Good boy. Bisley, here. Bang. Here. Bisley, here. Here. Biz, here. Here. Good, Good boy. Lad. Good boy. Right, whoops. Try again. Busy, here. Perfect. Good boy. See? The more they practice, the better Bisley becomes. He's a good boy. And slowly treats are replaced with praise. 
What's this? <gasps> Busy, here, here. Look at Good that. Boy. Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. How about That's that, Laura? Amazing. <laughs> well done, Sam. Good boy. <laughs> but how will Bisley do when he's reunited with his partner in crime and Graham raises the stakes? We haven't seen anybody walking a dog. No. That will be the true test. But I've got somebody ready to help us walk oh, a dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be horrible to Biz, but I'm fairly convinced we are going to fail. Oh, are you? Yeah, I, I do feel that. Oh, you're right then. It will. It will <laughs> but fail. I am going to think positive <laughs> and be confident. <laughs> That's but the just this will be a one-off. This will be a first yeah. if I'm able to bring him back. Laura has good reason to doubt her dogs. For the last few years, their recall around other dogs has been their biggest battle. Biz here? Biz here? And their first Biz attempt is far from a success. Biz here? Right, now you need to Biz pull here? him backward. Bisley, good boy. But persistence pays off. That's it. Bisley here? Colin. Oh, well done. Good that's the boy. one. That's it. That's what we want. Eventually, the pair nail it. Ready here. Although they're on a long lead now, they're responding to verbal commands and treats. Bisley here. That's the one. Give a Bisley. With practice, this duo will be safely off lead in no time. Hold on. Bisley here. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Good boy. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, what about that, Laura? Oh my God! I, honestly, I have never, ever, with my voice, been able to get him away. It's always been a grab him. Uh. Yeah. No, I'm really genuinely amazed. I never thought he'd be able to do it. Oh God! <laughs> honestly, that is amazing. Oh yes. Thank you so much. What changes is this going to make to your life? Walking the dogs has never. It'll be less stressful. Yeah, it opens up possibilities. Hard work ahead, actually. Yeah. yeah. But you know what you're doing now. Yeah. Laura and Sam got these two dogs, so they could go for lovely country walks. With two dogs that walk nicely, the bottom line is, they could never do that before, but they can now. So, two happy dogs, two happy people going for walks in the country, it's entirely possible. No way did we expect to get anything like as far as we've got in such a short amount of time. We're approaching normality, and that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. In London, Kobe has kept his end of the bargain, allowing Mark and Dawn's grandchildren to visit. Oh, is he eating his bone now, say? Casper's called an end to his noise-disturbing days. And Maddie and Bisley have made major strides forward on their journey to becoming the perfect country companions. We've got the tools now, so we are so determined to get both of them absolutely smashing both disciplines, so fingers crossed. If you think your badly behaved dog could do with Graham's help, then why not get in touch? Details can be found at www.channel5.com forward slash get involved.